Games are just losses, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. it's like when a bunker rush gets you, but it takes longer. Yeah. You're like, You're oh, like, oh, oh you right. kill my hatchery in like gotta, four drones. Gotta, gotta so. practice that a little bit more. Yeah. You just have to have perfect defense against that type of thing. And if you don't, then, well, uh, Protoss is probably going to roll you. Okay, the Lings are going to come in here now. Uh, at this point in time, Protoss is impenetrable. Mm. I mean, airtight. And um, that means this push is going to continue. Oh, DRG, man. Ugh. So we do have the Lurker Den on the way. It's like halfway done. Which is uh, really bad. We have a bit of an army coming over here, I guess. <laughs> I guess. It's not very big yet, but uh, he does have Blink getting charged on the way. We do have the double Immortal production uh, with much better time. Oh, in this good game. point. I would have missed that. Yeah, double Immortal production and the Temple Archives coming up here. Okay, I'm sorry. Did he finish Blink? This is because he has like two stalkers. You know what, man? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm, uh, this is I'm interested. So, something seems a little bit weird here because this, yeah. I, if he was, I thought he would have had a ton of stalkers and, be, and commenced a crazy push. I but think. I actually think I've figured something out here for Hush. Just watch these stalkers and tell me if you see him blink, and I'll explain about this after. I think, I think actually what he did last game was might have been very smart, but met, he messed up. Okay. And I think he did it right this game. Talk, uh, talk to me. Tell me what you're thinking. Okay, yeah, I guess nothing's happened. I can dive in. If he canceled blink, I think what he did was he starts blink, and scouts to see if you're going Spire. If you are, he kills you like it's Heart of the Swarm with a blink timing attack. Okay. If you're not, he can back out of that. He doesn't really have Stalkers yet because you warp those in later anyways. Yeah. And he goes into normal play. And this way, he doesn't oh, have to buy that's, Phoenixes. That's really smart. Now, and if you don't have to buy Phoenixes, your ground army is a hell of a lot bigger and stronger. I'm doing a good job shaving off these roaches here. Oh my god, my leg fell asleep. Oh, this feels, this is, this is prickly. <laughs> oh. All right. It certainly is, but I'm trying yeah. to wake my leg up here. Um, he's going to start uh, pushing forward here, and I think Protoss might be able to handle this. Yeah, no, I, I, his army is totally fine. Like, he's not going to die right now unless he messes up uh, quite badly here. DRG, though, looks like he is pushing up here. Might want to just harass lightly from that high ground. Push a lurker up there or something. This is a nice little choke for DRG to try to hold on to. But he should not be attacking in like that. He, he needs the Lurkers actually supporting him. Kind of surprised he's actually warping that that yeah. close to the, the well, range of the Immortals here. I guess he can kind of make a oh, little bit yeah. of a wall. Yeah, actually, no, you're totally right. That actually does function as well. Okay. Well, uh, some good force heals do come down. And with these charge lots charging in, it's actually doing a great job of making those Lurker spines go everywhere. We got some Roach reinforcements coming in over here, but yeah. already uh, too late as the rest of that army's picked off. Now, to go back to what you were talking about earlier, Artosis, yeah. I, you know, I, I think you're probably right about he, he text a Blink and if he doesn't see Spire. Yeah. He doesn't. I wonder if it's better to just let Blink finish because you're going to eventually want to have Blink anyways. You're on three bases. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I, I cancel, think he might be cancel canceling builds. it not because of the money, but because of the build time in the twilight. He deems that he needs to get charge out, and thus cancels it because of that that's, not because of the hundred fifty gas. That's really interesting. I like what you said there. Okay, I, I think you sold me on that because I was going to say like cancel builds are normally those have no worth after like four minutes in the game. Yeah, and, I, and no, pretty I much agree. any RTS game, it's like well, I mean, if you're actually playing yeah. with the minerals on three bases, I mean, are we really talking about like like? Cutting saving 48 minerals or something. Yeah, 48 like. minerals here or like 120 minerals over yeah, here to, to, to do this. But but if if this is what he's doing, which I, I think it, it might be, this is a really smart thing, like an evolution that we had to see in this matchup. Like you can't just have it so that you have to go Phoenixes against Zerg or that ends up being like, like that's not a healthy place to be in the game. So very interesting stuff here from Hush. Okay, he's starting to come up now. And uh, I think this is going to be the end of the game, man. I like the hallucinated yeah. Archon, by the way, on the right. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's pretty cute. Takes some good damage. Um, okay. So uh -oh. Shredder's revealed his nose. <laughs> all right, there we go back. Oh, no. All right. Oh, my God. That's we what Shredder looks identity. like. Oh, my God. Shredder looked like Hush all along. That's oh so crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hush uh, is going to go get those toidles right after this. <laughs> okay, so cool game uh well not actually not a cool game but cool to maybe see what hush is thinking about with this with this type of style that he yeah. kind of he bungled it definitely in game one if this is what if i'm correct on these on these ideas and what we're watching here but uh game two he just he killed too much with the adept in oracle so it didn't like 
When DRG attacked there, I'm sure everyone at home is looking at it and be like, why, why are you doing that right now? He needed to do something to come back. Hush was on four bases. Like, DRG well, had to take a risk. He was playing from a deficit. I mean, yeah. I think a, a, a lot of players, if that was like Ladder, for instance, would have just left. But you know, DRG is thinking like, okay, well, this is a tournament. Maybe mm -hmm. he's going to screw up. Guy gets a little bit anxious sometimes, so maybe I could pull something off. Yeah. Well, you think Hush is wearing that because he's sick? Uh, it's possible. You know, a lot of people in Korea will wear those masks just for fashion. Yeah, is Hush one of those people? That's uh, the question, isn't it? I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe he is sick. This is a much more common thing, guys, in uh, uh, Asia. Yeah, the population density. Uh, if if people get sick, sick, it's considered polite to wear it's one also, of those masks. It's also, you can wear one if you don't want to, if you're not really interested in communicating with people. It's kind of like having earbuds in there. People are just less likely to come up and bother you. Um, Although people kind of keep it themselves in Korea. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's great if it's really Welcome cold out, it'll keep GSL. your face a little bit warmer. All right, guys, this is game number three. Hush against DRG on the last day of the GSL Code A. In the upper left, winning that last game, he is. CJ and this is Hush. What's up, guys? Thumbs up, peace. Thumbs up. <laughs> They're quick. They're good. Two thumbs up and a peace for this GSL. Or victory. Uh, in the bottom right, in the red, he is. Peaceless. Victory. Yeah. V is for Vendetta. I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> I read that. Is it a good book? V is V for Vendetta. Uh, it's it's. I read this comic, graphic novel. Yeah, is it good? Uh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I, I didn't watch the movie or read it, so I don't really know. Yeah, the movie's okay. It's 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 okay. I mean, it, the story it's good enough, but yeah. that's all about like you know, they got this really cool thing with like uh, the the government, like it's like this um, like hegemonic evil government like oppresses its citizens and like they refer to the different parts of the government mm -hmm. as like like the spy group is like the eyes they call them the eyes and then they have like. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 propaganda network is referred to as the mouth and like the people that in, uh, it's really cool oh, like okay. the way they describe it Sounds and I, and I think cool. the guy that runs the whole country they refer to him as the head I, it's it's it pretty pretty cool pretty well it's by Alan Moore okay. uh, same guy that uh, wrote w Watchmen ah huh. yeah I'm gonna have to try one of these graphic that, this, novels you've been talking about this is uh, yeah I can I can bring one down next time we cast actually I'll let you borrow one uh, we actually have a, this is a funny ass looking <laughs> game okay let's yeah. talk about what we see here okay. We got, and I actually really like it, by the way, mm -hmm. but he has a wall in here. Yes. But he's taking the gold base. And you know what? Why not just do that? Because that's going to make, when you eventually take your third base, it's going to yeah. make that easier. Yeah. Uh, it allows you to get to, to get access to your gold base, which Zerg is going to be eager to harass quickly. I like this build. I like it a lot as well. And I think that this is a really smart opening because we do see, for instance, like yesterday we saw, uh, you know, some some kind of, bad play, I guess we can call it, against Zerg gold bases. When you open up like this, and it, I mean, at least he can put some pressure onto this gold, maybe force some drones to stop mining, kill a couple yeah. drones off, something like that. And yeah, the, the wall in is just so much closer to the third than the ramp would be that he can easily, you know, walk yeah. back and forth with his units and actually try to get a defense going. So it's cool. I don't think I've actually casted a game where we saw this kind of wall there at the entrance with the gold base being taken, but now that I've seen it, I think we should probably see this in every other game here to come. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, as we watch this, like, Hush may not be uh, actually performing the the most perfect of plays that we're oftentimes used to seeing from some of the better Protosses in the world. That's but, right. Uh, so far, strategically, there's some cool stuff going on. And th that kind of speaks to exactly what we were talking about before. This guy is great in practice. He chokes a lot on TV. But he's known as a very strong and very intelligent Protoss player. Kind of uh, reminds me a little bit of Terminator that I was I just one of my favorite pros last year. Yeah, he's fantastic. Just uh, I, I wish he was still around. But um, Twilight Council coming up here. Uh, he did peek in there and see that the gold base is being taken. And that's one thing that makes this map especially interesting is that it's not just one gold base that Zerg can take, it's actually two. And Protoss does not have an easy time taking the second gold base. Mm -hmm. That is, that's tough. Yeah, that, that would be their fourth base probably. And I mean, the game is probably being decided well before then anyways, because Zerg does take that so quickly. So Protoss should probably do something more aggressive. And here we do see resonating glaives on the way. So uh, the obvious thing that 
And in fact, I mean, Hush, I'm sure, knows this, that a Roach Horn should be coming up. You see this many Adepts, you see the gold base that makes your armies more mineral heavy. Obviously, he has to do something like an Adept all in. That's right. So with the Roach Horn, how does he go ahead about uh, attacking against that? Okay, uh, good job just zoning these out. Uh, we have the massive gateway explosion here. We may see some pressure coming up here. I think he's this is actually an adept timing build where it's it's engineered to hit the third base. But quite intelligently so, uh, our Zerg player is actually going to do a drop at the exact same time this, this uh, push is going to come out. Oh, he has a drop up there? Yeah, man, uh, up there in the main. Oh. There's a, there eight lings up there. Oh, sick. Well, we'll see when he uh, ends up doing that. We do have this shading in of these Adepts. He doesn't quite have the Glaives yet, so he wants to be careful. That would be a sick anti-timing. And there are those Lings you were talking and about, I think, Tasis. I think he wants to wait for the next Adept warp in to happen. That would Because he's going to yeah. have this all happen at the same time, and then he's going to have to wait for the cooldown. Oh, trying to do a little surround on these Adepts so far, but Resident <laughs> Glaives are about to finish in. Look oh, at that. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's a good move right there by DRG. All right, and some of these Adepts, boom, inside the expansion. Uh, DRG in a lot of trouble here, already losing a ton of drones. And he is not done yet. Hush is going to go ham now into the main. Yeah, this is looking really good. Denying all the mining at this gold base, really hurting his economy. But in the meantime, 10 probes have fallen here in that main base of Hush. Okay, uh, we're about to see them shade inside the main. Here we are. Not the main, excuse me, this expansion. All right, looks like they're going to go after this spine as well. That's really nice because that messes up the AI of Adepts so badly. And uh, he's, he's still warping in over here. Mm. Oh, he actually canceled the shade there. Well, I guess yeah. he realized he can actually put <laughs> this fight down here, so why not just stay? Yeah, may as well. Uh, looks like he will try to shade out of here. Definitely going to lose some of these adepts, though, right now. 69 supply to 65. Uh, Protoss is in a deficit with workers due to that harass. Mm -hmm. He's trying to draw as many roaches as possible. You can see the adepts are just a little bit faster than the roaches. So he wants to try to get some of the army down here. He's going to push, I believe, into the third again. Yeah, it looks like a lot of Adepts have been warped in here. Going ahead, pushing towards this gold base. A lot of Roaches are out, but that is a lot of Adepts. Yeah, man, he's got a pretty solid army. I, there might be a chance that Zerg can just barely hold on, though. Let's see. Mm. It's really going to come down to how much of this can actually shade over here. If he gets enough drone kills, this is going to uh, snowball out of control. I wonder if it would have been at all possible for Protoss to uh, make a nexus to the gold with this. I guess not, because it's... Nah, never mind. I take it back. Hmm. Well, uh, he is continuing to put on a lot of pressure here, just fighting against the Roaches at the moment, not pulling back at all. In fact, canceling the Shade. I don't uh, understand this, he doesn't, actually. Yeah, he doesn't win this he's battle. He's actually canceled so. Shades a couple times where I was assuming, oh, maybe he knows something and he's going to win. But then I see this, and I'm like, no, those think, don't beat that many Roaches, man. I think I'm just most confused about the fact that he sat there, and he did not Shade, nor did he run, when it seemed clear that the Roaches were just going to win, as there were many more Roaches than there were Adepts. Uh, kind of weird how that went. Like that was, And again, we're looking at this situation where Hush has done a strategy that really looks quite nice, uh, but maybe just isn't, isn't performing it uh, up to par here. Yeah. He's coming forward now. Um, I think the DRG just kills him, man. Yeah, yeah. They're this is uh, this has meters. been a weird series, guys. Yeah, it has. This has been a very weird series. Um, so if you're wondering how adepts do against roaches, I think you have your answer. <laughs> you can see he's like, do I go back and nah, I'll just kill the gold base. He actually will be on one base so fast. Yeah, Redropping as well, very nice. Only a single pylon here to put the overcharge down on. <laughs> the adepts much. came back, that's so hilarious. Oh, man. He's like, oh, God, I'm going to lose that base. Yeah, no, I, there's, <laughs> God, weird, weird series so far, man. Yeah. Very yeah. strange series. GG, okay, whatever. I actually just, uh, regardless if, if DRG just goes ahead and takes the series, I hope it goes to game five, just as, as, as a fellow Protoss player, I would love to see more of what Hush is doing, because at least the opening builds, I'm like, oh, okay, this is, there's some real intelligence here. It's just, like, I don't know, I think he's wearing that because he's sick. Because some of these moves where he's like, I'll tell you letting what. all his adepts just die to roaches and canceling shades and stuff and not running, like all that at once, it's like, whoa, you're just a bit off. I'll tell you what's not sick. His play. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Oh, man.
DRG with the poopy face here. Well, DRG looking to get into yet another code S. He's got the droopy dog face going on there. This would be DRG's uh, 50 second code S if he gets in. What? If DRG makes it into this code S, it'll be his 50 second G GSL code S. We haven't had that many GSL code S's. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, give Hush your energy here. He's having a rough day. DRG has been shrekking him. Um, hopefully, he can turn this around. Anyways, I'm Tasteless with me as Artosis. We're Tasteless, and this is the GSL Code A. In the upper right, in the blue. CJ and this is Hushi. In the bottom left, in the red, he is. Dongnegu. All right. See if DRG is on the match point now to get into Code S once again. Starting out slow here at Code A today. Last yeah. day of Code A, though. Yeah, this has uh, not been the best series just because there's been a lot of weirdness in some yeah. of the games. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But uh, there's there's definitely some, some redeeming things that we're watching, like uh, s strategically and then... Uh, sometimes one-sided games can be good in yeah. certain ways, where it's like, okay, well, if you don't have the right, you know, units when when lurkers come, like, here's what happens. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Uh, but yeah, not not the best series so far. I would agree. That's okay though, because the other series we have today are going to be a lot better. Yes, they certainly will be. Mm -hmm. This is like our exhibition match today before we yeah. really kick things off. Tasia. Going to be playing next, guys. So a definitely lot of spread people, the word. A lot of people going to be rooting for that guy. He's yeah. one of the fan favorites. Mm. <coughs> well, not anything uh, too spectacular going on. Just the very fast double expand once again from DRG. Hush just going into the single gateway with the expansion. The way a little bit, see what he goes for. Will it just be that Oracle play once again? So we got a little bit of downtime here. Mm -hmm. You've been playing any cool games, man, besides Legacy? Oh, uh, yeah, I've been playing. Uh, well, there's there's three games that I'm really playing right now. Oh, yeah? And then there's another game that I played a little bit recently that I had more fun playing than I thought I would. OK, so th obviously Legacy of the Void. Yep. Uh, Heroes of the Storm been playing. Uh, enjoy that game a lot. Uh, Etrian Odyssey that I've been playing for like over a year because I only play it like on subways <laughs> and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah. like, so subway There's train, like I might There's this whole story going on in your life that only you know. I have know nothing about it, man. Yeah, Just yeah, and uh, still playing that. I think I'm getting to the end of the game finally. Cool. Uh, but that's that's pretty fun. And uh, then also, um, that's a Japanese RPG, right? Yes, m very are you, much are you, so. So you're close to the world ending, right? And the resource that they're fighting over turns out to be controlled by evil or something. Either that or very the, close. Or very the religious close. organization turns out to be corrupt or. You basically like you could work that, for this company. Or the the aliens made us. And what was that sound? <laughs> the start of a match. It's like our producer just like just strummed a guitar real fast. Like, <laughs> <"Bam!"> <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically that. But yeah, that that's fun. Um, but the other thing I was I was going to mention. Um, oh look at this! He's actually get a few drones. Uh, is I did for for Christmas uh, get the wife skis a uh, PlayStation Four. Oh nice. And she really badly wanted um, Rock Band for that. Oh, yeah, that's a good game. So we actually got Rock Band with the drum set. And so I played nice. Rock Band with drums for the first time. And it was actually pretty fun. I'm yeah, rhythm really games are terrible great. at it, but it was actually, I had a good time. Someone should tell me a good rhythm game on cell phone I can play. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind picking that up. Someone tweet that at me. Anyways, in this game so far, we have seen Hush actually uh, do a really good job um, taking out drones. I gotta say, although Hush has had some other questionable play, mm -hmm. when it comes to this harass, he seems to have this down to a T. 
Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's doing a really good job. And look how safe he plays as well. Just leaves this at home. He realizes that there is enough lings out that a counterattack should be coming. And there it is now. Yeah, and he can easily clean this up by just turning on that Oracle. Lings do have to get out of there. And this is kind of, you know what? I do want to mention something. I like, Please. the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm liking the way that Hush is playing with the double Oracle. And it's not like the double Oracle is new. Uh, we've definitely seen a lot of Protoss players do it, but then a lot reverted going into like Phoenix play over Oracle play. Yep. But with the change to the Photon Overcharge, I would call the change to it a nerf against Zerg. Huh. Uh, is what I think that it really did. It be going up to 50 energy and all. Um, but having a second Oracle, that's that that it's subs like, in for that. Yeah, yeah. Lings no longer are going to tax your Lings mothership core. Lings basically cannot take out an expansion early game if there's an Oracle there. Yeah, it's just, just not going to happen. Totally. And then when the Ling threat is gone, look at this. He flies across, does some harassment. Uh, and, and I mean, obviously getting great scouting going on, clearing out overlords with just a single Phoenix, but not overspending gas. I. I like a lot of what we're seeing here. Um, from DRG's side, I'm sure we're going to see a Hydralis Den popping right up. That's really been the way that he's been playing so far here. And that's kind of the standard for ZVP right now. Okay, uh, here's Blink. Let's keep our eyes peeled on that, man. Let's see if he actually does decide to cancel the Blink. Yeah, this is going to be uh, kind of because interesting to watch. This is going to be a cool build that we can yeah. totally copy. Yeah. We can totally steal this and shrek the nerds <laughs> in the ladder. Well, uh, Hydralisk Den is almost finished, and the Oracles are going in for another sweep. Now, will they see the Hydralisk Den this time? I'm not actually 100% sure it is. I think it's to the left of this left extractor, so we should not have seen it quite yet. Ooh. Ooh. Some real damage. That was close. Backing up now with the Oracles. Six Hydras on the way as we're now entering the Hydra tech of the game. I'm still mm -hmm. keeping my eyes peeled on that blink. I do want to see if he does go for the cancel. Yeah, kind of interesting. Doesn't seem like there's going to be a Spire okay, anytime tags. soon here. He tags. He now sees a Hydralis Den. It's upgrading. Okay, so does he cancel? Or maybe, well, maybe because he sees it's Hydras. upgrading, yeah, maybe. he can go Blink Stalker anyway. That's actually a very good point, Artosis. Yeah, like, uh, absolutely. We, we've seen that in the past, that if you have good Blink Micro and you have some sentries in there and stuff, Blink is blink is useful. So it looks like he'll just go ahead and keep it, go for that second Robo as well. Okay, he's come down now. Uh, sentries and stalkers just push forward a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's been a fairly passive game, so he does let Blink finish here. And I guess, you know, in this case, as you were saying, Artosis, that's completely fine because you can go Blink Stalker against Hydra. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, I mean, eventually we'll probably see Lurkers, but he has a second Robo uh, with such speed that he should be all right anyways. Now, Blink can be quite strong against yeah. Lurkers. If you just do it right and Blink a Stalker into the middle of the Lurker group and... and Draw the fire mm. into that. Uh, your next stalkers can come in there, or even just a blink at a certain angle where you can just hit mm. really well and, and distribute the uh, spines to be spread out amongst several stalkers. Mm. And, you know, charge on the way right now. Um, you know, it might be like you were saying last game as well, where uh, he just lets Blink finish, because, like, again, it's not about the money. It would be, like, does he need charge quick enough or something? But Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's getting charge, and the thing is, he just hasn't made that many Stalkers, but still very interesting. Yeah, Blink is one of those abilities, if, if we go into, like, a 20-minute game, there's never been a Protoss game ever, ever, where there wasn't Blink eventually <laughs> yeah. upgraded. That's just, like, you have to have that, okay? Mm. And the MC or Myungshik would pull off a 20-minute Protoss game without yeah. playing. <laughs> nice <laughs> job over here, hitting these drones. Good adept to Ras. Yeah, No really other nice. warpings just yet. Looks like he's going to play conservative and just keep warping in at home. Wow, he found really quite the soft spot. That forces everything to go home. It does. And he can actually pick up and even go into the main if he wants. Yeah, looks like we're going to have a double drop here of Lings. And that Prism really keeping him at home right now. All right, we do have Archons on the way. That fourth base is being taken. Yeah, I'm not sure if Zerg is going to be able to stop this. Um, by the way, Protoss actually had in supply and workers. So Protoss has been doing a pretty good job overall this game. We can definitely see this going into game number five. Yeah, yeah, it definitely could. But let's see what this Ling Drop does. And also, the Spire finished, right? He could pop uh, yeah. 12 Mutas. And well, this army is not lead. really made to deal with it that well. A couple Archons and Stalkers, yeah, but just the mobility of Mutas could be very powerful coming up. 
Okay, he's doing the drop now. In yeah. the upper right. Oh, it looks like uh, these units have come far enough out that DRG feels safe dropping that to get maximum damage. And with that, he's going to try to head home. Uh, I think he can actually possibly get the Nexus here. He's going to continue to take out these Zealots mm. uh, and a lot more back there. The Adepts are also going to come up here trying to do a little bit of harass. No War Prism in sight to pick them back up. Sorry, right. they shade out of there in no time. It looks like DRG going to go ahead and withdraw up this ramp. Does come back down as his, neck, or his uh, hatchery starts getting attacked. Okay, nice force field. The Lings are going to come around. This is exactly what he wants to do. But is it going to be enough? We have some Hydras stuck over here. Lurkers are going to be coming out as well. As the Lings are picked off, the uh, remaining Hydras stuck back behind these force fields. Nice job there by Hush. That was a really clean attack, and he's doing the exact right thing. He needs to pull out. Well, this was a really nice play by Hush. Like, to get in there, kill that, and then back out. This is exactly the right type of move. Now he's on four base against three. Yeah, he took some damage over here. Uh, but... That, that was a pretty crippling blow to DRG. DRG still has a pretty strong army, though. We'll see if he wants to do an attack. Uh, DRG's going to push up here. I guess tactically, uh, Hush is probably one of the better players we've seen, minus when he wasn't running with those adepts. Yeah. He's actually pretty solid, man. He makes, he makes some mistakes, but there's a lot of great play here. I think it is safe to assume that uh, Hush might be a little bit sick today. Judging from that mask and some of the questionable play style, which sucks, mm. man. That would be horrible to be sick on your GSL day. I think that's the first time you used Blink, by the way. Out of the five stalkers you made, he's now Blink the three remaining to kill in, that Overlord in game quickly. Four. Yep. <laughs> Very cool stuff, though. Got some more warp ins. Protoss is eager to just take the uh, make the killing blow here. Mm. Uh, he should know that Zerg should be expanding to the center left. Yeah, there's a degree of predictability. With totally. That. Oh, never mind. He already knew. Yeah. Like, there has to be another base on the way. And we do actually have the Fleet Beacon and a second Stargate on the way. Uh, and, in fact, a third Stargate. So, it looks like he does want to go ahead into Tempest to make sure he can actually end up breaking DRG when it's time. Like, if DRG somehow holds on with Lurkers, the Tempest will be, like, the killing blow. Okay, he's edging forward. And uh, this is a lot of Immortals. Blinking over here to the side, he's got a nice concave, a nice arc here. Not clear how many Lurkers are actually remaining in this army. It's mostly Hydras for now. Oh man, actually just tags everything and GG. that's it. Wow. Cool, let's go into game number five. Yeah. Hush actually pulls through in that last one. That was some really clean play, and I, I feel like I've learned a lot more about what he's doing here with this Blink upgrade. I think the Blink upgrade is kind of like a safety thing. You can't always be sure of when the Spire is coming up, but if you already have Blink Research, that's going to give you an exponentially higher chance of winning uh, if they do sneak that in. Uh, Blink never a bad upgrade like you were saying earlier. No real reason to cancel it. So I, this is kind of cool. He just tries to be out on the map with pressure. I think game one he just bungled the build a little bit. Maybe his robos were a bit late. Yeah. Everything seemed just slightly off. Well, let's see if he does something similar here in uh, game five. Mm -hmm. It's all on the line now. One of these guys is going to go on to code S. By the way, What's also up? loved his usage of his stasis wards throughout this this match. He definitely uses them more yeah. than any other player that I've seen. Yeah, his fourth base that was so far away from where he's attacking, he just put down mass stasis wards. He's like, well, if you yeah. do attack, at least it doesn't die right away. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool All right, stuff. guys, tell your friends to join us here at the GSL Code A, our last day of Code A before we start uh, kicking up into high gear and go straight into Code S. Well. What do you think, Tasis? Who ends up taking it now? I don't know, man. This series has been weird. These games have been a little bit rocky. Could be either of them. Let's see what happens in the early game, actually. All right. Where they where they go from there? Will it hush down that good harass? Or will Welcome DRG have oh, a good time? Good you know? point. Good point. All right, guys. This is the last day of the GSL Code A. Hush against DRG in a fight for one of the final Code S spots. In the bottom right, in the blue, he is. CJ and this is Hushi. Upper left, in the red. All 
All right, we actually have a pretty good audience. There, people shut up a little bit. Yeah, later the studio was uh, a little bit more empty at the start. I was a little bit yeah. worried. I'm like, that's weird. We got well, good games today. I think uh, most of the fans, at least that live out here, are waiting for innovation and Stork. So maybe they come a little bit later. No, yeah, you're not going to miss be. it. It's mm -hmm. the fourth match tonight. So, although for foreigners, uh, a lot of people love DRG and Tasia for sure. This first two matches important. We see the third base is going to be put down here uh, in the center left. S scouting probe. Now, what it, what was that? <laughs> well, it looked like a crown on like a something. I don't know. Like that was like King the, po Kitty Cat the or Pokemon something. that didn't make it. Yeah. Actually, if you take a look at like modern day, what some of the Pokemon look like, imagine what the ones look like that they rejected. Like what the <laughs> like some yeah. of these I look I'm like okay so you're a po I'm so glad that I it's like the you know I play Pokemon. the original and you know and I I no longer worship this game as I did as a child because like some of these new Pokemon I'm just like what yeah the, how the, many floating things are around you but you're a living animal like, yeah it's like looks like the donut with eyes and feet didn't make it like I mean how weird did they have to be where you're like well that that no not no, this one that's no. not gonna pass oh, I can't, you're Pokemon. fired yeah. you're fired for you get out of here man. You're never going to make it at Nintendo. <laughs> All right, so the spawning pool is uh, almost done. By the way, I, I, I need to mention real quick, Pokemon's been out 20 years now. That makes it older than StarCraft. StarCraft's 18 years old, old enough to die for its country. Mm. Pokemon's going to buy StarCraft some yeah. underage beers That's soon. That's right, yeah, by next year, yeah. I mean, StarCraft's going to be shoulder-tapping mm. Pokemon outside the liquor yeah. store. I, was, I, saw, <laughs> I saw someone tweet that the other day. I'm like, damn, that is... A really long time Good God, ago. God, then how old is Mario? Mario is like 400 years old, man. Mario's having a midlife crisis. There was right now, Mario's buying a Ferrari. <laughs> there, dude, it, it, Mario was like, there were pictures of Mario on Egyptian tomb walls, okay? Yeah. That's not true. Everybody knows Cleopatra had an Atari. <laughs> Okay, uh, the Oracle's coming up here. Now, remember, guys, the Adept Harass has been pretty solid so far from Hush in this series. Let's see if he has the same success this time around. Looks like DRG's making enough links. I don't think he's going to be able to get too much done. Uh, looks like maybe like 10, 12 links are, have been made here. So, yeah, I, I think uh, DRG taking this really seriously this time. But well, with the Oracle on the way, is he okay, he has one spore coming, two spores. Here we go. This is how you do it. If he has his spores ready when the Oracle gets there, shouldn't really be taking very much damage at all. Maybe a couple drones, three max. Well, let's see. He's been pretty sharp and on point when that's happened, but I yeah. think you are right. He's made enough links. He's definitely not. I mean, DRG is a player who can adjust uh, as time passes, and mm -hmm. certainly he's, you know, taken into account just how well that harass has been there. All right, so we do have these lings coming up. The speed is just about done. Oracle checks at third base, only a couple drones. One queen for every drone there, so we'll back up. Okay, uh, more gateways coming down now as the game continues on. And we probably will see that second Oracle uh, parked back there mm -hmm. the expansion like we've seen before. Yeah, it probably means he wants to take a third base rather quickly here. I think so. Maybe where that Overlord is, actually. Yeah. Let's see if he goes down and takes that. Because he's not, like, adding anything that can get an early kill or anything like that. Would have had to already start that Twilight if he wanted to do a two base. Roach Warren on the way. Now, this map can be a little bit a little bit hard and scary against Zerg sometimes. Uh, I wonder if DRG is going to get very aggressive here against a three base play from Hush. I'm not sure, actually. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so he's going to tear down the rocks over here with these adepts, which is actually completely fine. Yeah. He's got the oracles out, uh, but he's going to use that to harass. You ever kill destructible rocks with oracles? <laughs> oh, every day, man, every day. That's why I lose so That's much. That's why I get a quick oracle is to kill destructible yeah, yeah. rocks. <laughs> Takes a while. Look how much you know. damage they do. <laughs> Just make a third oracle, man, and you're fine. You have two harassing and one, you know, over the course of five minutes destroying those rocks. <laughs> yeah. All right, we do have those adepts moving out right now. Okay, we have the pylon cannon activated. Zerg has to back up. And he's going to do this push with these Adepts and Oracles. And we haven't quite seen him do something like this. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool because we don't actually have Roaches out yet, right? So, uh, by, ooh, he loses one of those Oracles. I'm not sure if this works. Yeah. Um, Even though he doesn't have Roaches, you're right. I don't. I think that, I mean, Lings are fine against Adepts. And Zerg always has enough Queens that if it comes to a head-to-head -head fight, 
you will lose the oracles. Mm -hmm. uh, Hush is going to have to back up, I would say. We do have that Hydralisk Den on the way. Roach speed and plus one range attack for DRG. This continues to shade out. Has to chase the shades. Just, it's kind of like a... If you chase the oracles down, then they'll just let the shade finish, and then you have to run back anyways, and it's like, oh, God. Okay, so he's going to get these uh, rocks down here. Moving out of the way of that. Okay, and we're going to be having Lurker play coming up here. Blink has started. Um, Artosis, if you're just not joining us, Artosis has had a theory that he actually scouts out the Zerg um, looking as Blink's upgrading, looking to see if there's a threat of you know mutas or hydras, and occasionally there's a possibility that he just insta-cancels it. And yeah. goes right into Zealot Legs for I a powerful timing attack. I, I'm revising this now as, as okay. we watch multiple games into being, I think he probably finishes Blink each time uh, and just doesn't make many stalkers. Like, only will go stalkers if that's what he needs, which is against standard Zerg play right now, not normally the case. Mm. Well, okay, did he cancel this time, actually? We see charge well, on the way. I think he did. Yeah, he I canceled. think he did he cancel this time. What if we've been okay. wrong every time and Blink's finished? And people are like, these guys are idiots. I'll, I'll be rewatching probably the, all these games just because no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like a fan of this build. Sure he canceled it. Okay. Yeah, me too. I think what happened is he saw how quickly this lurker den was making. He's like, okay, well this is a, a very quick committal into lurker, yep. and if I don't have charge and mortals against this, I'm going to be dead. Like Blink is yep. absolutely not going to help against this type of composition. Yep. All right, the lings are uh, starting to tear down those rocks. And uh, we'll see. War Prism now going to loop around here. Ooh, we do have that Hydra upgrade coming as well. Six uh, Lurkers on the way. Double Immortal coming. Storm on the way as well. The, the first push should hit before Storm is done for sure. But Charge will be ready and plus two will be ready, so that's pretty darn good. Okay, the uh, War Prism's looping around now. Yeah, he wants to keep him back as long as he can with that prism. I'm really interested in seeing how this army actually does uh, interact with the Zerg army, the Protoss army, I was saying. Uh, um, yeah, because there, there, we've had a couple games where Zerg, uh, like DRG this, at this point in time, is maxed out once again. This is actually even even quicker max than the previous game. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Hush just got <laughs> owned, man. It was like pretty... Yeah. He definitely did, but with this flank, I Dude, think he he'll, he'll, he'll he do a pretty good job. He should have ran in quicker, actually. He, he should he wait should. till his size storm is done. Like, yeah. Just sit back. Okay, like, that's Easy fine. Easy does it, nerd. Yeah. Um, but as size storm finishes and he flanks this, or he, actually, I guess he's not flanking. He didn't. He brought his complete force back, but uh, uh, if he can hit not, those lurkers from a different size. He's not even watching this, man. Mm. Oh, nice storms here. DRT is going to dive in. All right, a lot of size storms going down, doing a lot of damage here. I don't know if he actually has enough, though. DRG flooding in with more Zerglings. Now, here's something funny to say is I don't think that Blink would have changed this anyways, but there's there seems to be something about this strat where, like, oh. Zer Zer uh, Protoss mm. just barely does not have enough every time. Yeah. there's more Links coming in here, and that should take this expansion out. That was close I to a defense. I don't understand this, man. It was close to a defense, I want to say. Like, yeah, uh, it, it was. You're right, it was. He definitely died to it completely, but, like, it wasn't super duper far off. <laughs> like, what a weird game. Okay. I feel like if you told Zest or Hero to do this build, then they would hold this. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's something wrong about this, because Protoss seems to have a very clear plan, and we're just watching the DRG bop them. Mm. Now we actually have... 14 meters on the way, so even if he were to clean this up, he is a billion percent And here's the thing, now he doesn't mutas. have Blink against Mutas, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have, he has a, a Phoenix. Theoretically, yeah, on think, an infinitely large map, you could kill all those Mutas with the Phoenix, you if know, your opponent I, was stupid. <laughs> I think uh, Hush needs to go back to the lab, man. There's something off about this build, and I'm, I'm not hmm. sure what's going on with this. Huh. Yeah, I wonder. I, I wonder. Well, there's only one other base that Protoss has that uh, Protoss can't afford to lose, or cannot, excuse me, afford to lose, and he's going to lose that right now with all these mutas coming over here. Yeah, and he we may just see GG. Just GG. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, he might just stay in because he's like, oh, no, I want to be in Codes, but he's not. So. <laughs> well, now we have the critical tech structures being taken out. With no blink, that's a problem, but not but not having the Stargate 
uh, out here is going to be an even bigger problem. Mm. Continue to try to hold here. His Immortals actually being caught out with Lings and Mutas, two of the best things against Immortals. Uh, okay. Uh, weird first best of five for today, guys. Sorry about that. GG. Yeah. DRG takes it home. I'd say the fan favorite. A lot of people, although the series not amazing, certainly the results are exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool to have DRG back in Code S, of course. That's always fun. Uh, Hush. I don't know. We'll see how much we actually see him in Pro League this year because obviously you can tell that this guy does have skill. Like everyone said he does in practice quite a bit, and there's definitely some intelligence. I am, I'm going to step play. away here. Sojun's going to get this interview translated. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Good riddance. All right. Bye-bye, Tate. -bye, Sojun, how yes. are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah. How about you? Pretty good. DRG <laughs> is back in Code S, so right. that's always fun. I haven't seen him play in Korea, I think. I mean, I haven't translated any of his interviews. Well, you are in for a treat. I bet you that he's going to train hard <laughs> to show his fans good games. Th and thank you for supporting me. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, I made it to Kodas, and I kind of feel happy about it. Let's see how he's been doing. Well, I want to go abroad for WCS Premier, but due to Blizzard's 2016 WCS plans came out really late, and my plans were kind of um, got complicated, and I kind of lost interest in games, but I came back. In spite of these hardships, he made it to code us. 2012, you know, everyone was looking forward to DRG's plays. Let's see if we can see that this, year, uh, this season. Well, I'm kind of old now. I'm kind of worried if I'll be able to show my um, best abilities. But I will try to prepare a lot, try to show you guys a lot. After seeing DRG's plays, there were uh, kind of limited builds from DRG. Those roaches, hydras, score crawl. And he had those mutalists getting ready. And Kisado was asking if he had trust in this build or if he has any other builds or if he didn't have any time for other builds, actually. I did uh, prepare for other uh, strategies, but the opponents kept showing the same pattern, so that was a that was the best strategy I had up my sleeve. Talking about the adept and the two uh, oracles, and JRP expected roaches, but he had uh, DRG had Zerglings instead. Defended with Zerglings, and JRP is asking if that was the best choice. And you have to uh, defend with Zerglings to protect the gas, I think. And after I went against Adept for the first time. I thought uh, it would be better to go with Zerglings instead. Oh, I'm kind of I'm 26. Maybe some people call call me old. I don't know. I will try to keep up with the young players. Thank you. That was a new pattern, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, he is a much older pro, and uh, it's good to see a different type of interview from him. Kind of sad that he lost some interest, but hey, even losing interest, he's come back. He's in Code S. Yep. I hope he does well. Uh, just like you guys are going to do after we come back from this commercial break and have another best of five.
Mr. V. It's yours. Yeah, and right now we want y'all to move back. <목소리> 언제나 있는 그대로의 맑고 깨끗함을 지켜가라고. 겨울을 잊은 강물이 내게 말했다. 맑고 깨끗한 칠성사이다. 곰들이가 춤을 추니까 웃기죠? 이상해 보이나 봐요. 세상에 이상한 게 어디 있어? 시름하다 춤춘다 했을 때 모두 무모하다 했어요. 거래에서 춤춘다 했을 때 역시 무모하다 했고 100kg 넘는 곰들이가 이렇게 날렵해질 줄은 4년간 거리로 출석하는 팬들이 생길 줄은 저도 몰랐으니까요. 모르지만 가는 거예요. 근데 그 무모한 만큼 막 열정이 생기거든요. 전 그게 너무 좋아요. 아, 내가 살아있구나. 그런 희열감? 이 무모함으로 지금의 b j 의 춤추는 곰들이 됐습니다. 무모하다? 그건 다른 말로 살아있다. 자네가 그 치킨 매니아인가? 슝 합체 이건 마치 살아 움직이는 느낌인데 머리를 흔들면서 수염을 없애고 있어 슝 2,500만 명의 선택 플렉스볼 아직도 안 써보셨나요? 질레트 신제품 브라운 시리즈 3를 소개합니다 몇 번의 움직임만으로도 빠른 밀착 면도와 최적의 피부 편안함을 선사합니다 전에 없던 빠른 속도를 경험하라 신제품 브라운 시리즈 3 Only from Brown 코데 스팟은 are rapidly disappearing artosis. Only three more remain. That's right. Our next match is going to be Tasia versus Blaze. And although I think a lot of people would say Tasia's got this easy peasy, yeah. I don't know. I think Blaze is a lot stronger than people give him credit for. Sure. And if you guys don't know who Blaze is, it's because he recently changed his ID. He was known as Panic before. And he's he's had some good games in the past. Uh, definitely not one of our top tier Protosses, definitely not someone we expect to do well uh, necessarily in this GSL. 
We did get to see him get completely outplayed by Maru in Pro League on uh, Dust Towers this week. But uh, that's this Maru, though. Yeah, that's Maru. That's like one of the best of all time. That guy's pretty good. And he's still one of the best of all time. Of course, pretty Tasia. Crazy. Uh, Tasia has quite a resume behind him, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, but he's been winning a lot of tournaments. Yeah. The question is, how's he going to perform here in the GSL, the most competitive StarCraft tournament of all time? Well, if memory serves me right, he got last place in his last Code S that he played, and then I when he went to correct. Code A right after, he got completely destroyed. He got Shrek above. Yeah, but let's let's see. You know, he's had wrist problems in the past, and that was definitely uh, contributing somewhat to that. But uh, we haven't seen him in a while. I don't have really any idea of what his level is at right now. I'm just not sure. Blaze, uh, he's been a very strong player as of late on the team MVP, sponsored by Chicken Maru, which is apparently, I did not know this, a, a very common uh, chicken pub or chicken hop. Yeah. We were talking about that in one of the previous broadcasts. Interesting fact, I, I don't think many of our viewers who are not familiar with Korea know this, but um, Koreans love fried chicken and beer. And I know everybody loves fried chicken and beer, but Koreans really love it. <laughs> and there are more uh, chicken hops or chicken pubs where you get fried chicken and beer. There are more uh, of them in Seoul than there are McDonald's in the world. Yep. That's crazy. That is wild. I need to get my ass sponsored by a chicken hop right you away. You should. Yeah. You should. It's not the first time either. There was another one years ago that sponsored That's a right. GSL team. Yeah. So glad to see that they're actually supporting esports. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, Blaze has had a fair amount of fried chicken and beer since his sponsorship. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No, no doubt that place uh, lets them uh, yeah. hang out there for free. Well. Here we go, Tasis. We're going to be getting into game one on Orville Shipyard. If Tasia is anywhere near his prime, he should be able to make easy work of plays. But, you know, I guess I guess we just wait and see here what plays might have up his sleeves. All right, guys, let's get ready. Let's get hyped. This should be a fantastic best of five. Tasia, many believe, uh, well, at least I would say he's the Welcome fan favorite. I'm GSL. sure you guys supported him. But he might have met his match here against Blaze. Let's see what happens in this best of five. All right, down here in the bottom left, one of the most successful pro gamers ever sees. In the upper right, in the red. MVP Chicken Maru, Lady. What's up, guys in the audience? Thanks so much for coming down. We love you. We Good love night. you too, Blaze. Good night. <laughs> I'm done here, guys. Our toasts will solo cast the rest of this. A, we have a quick command center, by the way. CC first, which is uh, not as common anymore. Yeah, People, yeah, that's definitely true. But I, I think it's fine. I think you can do it. Yeah, with the builds that we've been seeing out of uh, Protoss players lately, like it's almost always a gateway gas expand. So, I mean, that's not really going to do very much against this. So, all right. So, Tasia just getting a nice little economic heads up. Yeah. I don't see why not uh, do this. Yeah. I suppose you could be susceptible to some forms of uh, cheese, but uh, Protoss are not really doing that no. nowadays, so I think he's actually playing around the meta pretty effectively, yeah. especially post-patch. Definitely seems that way. Um, we do have two racks. Is probably another one going to pop down. Yeah, three racks is here. So now this is kind of the, the part where it becomes a little bit more interesting. Like, how does Blaze go about countering this? If you do this against someone like... Uh, CJ Hero or KT Zest, they're going to look at this and be like, oh, well, there's a reason why Terrans don't do this as often because I know how to destroy you for doing this, yes. most likely. But, uh, and I, not necessarily like, just win the game, but like... No, there's definitely ways yeah. to exploit a player who's doing this. But, yeah. um, you know, if Blaze is caught off guard, this might give mm. Tasia that necessary advantage. Is he? he oh, lost yeah, he did get the SCV. Yeah, he did. You're right. That's... That does not bode well for Tasia, I would say. Not a good sign. You're not supposed to lose an SCV to a probe. It's not supposed to happen. But uh, yeah, anyways, I, I'm interested to see what, what Blaze actually does against his heading even. I wonder if you can just make another quick Nexus, like really quick. Because Terran actually can't push you. Yeah. It, right? I mean, they're not going to get I think Marine he, slow walking across the map. He might try something like that, like... Uh, just to put some pressure on. Uh, don't forget that the the photon overcharge has definitely changed quite a bit. So luring some of those out. That's like something we saw a lot 
uh, in Heart of the Swarm was Terran just push oh, yeah. out, make you do the photon overcharge to waste energy, and then go home. Yeah, milk the like energy that. from the mothership core and then yeah. back out again. Yeah. Well, very quick Twilight Council here. Will it be Blink? Or, okay, it's going to be Glaives. Obviously, that's going to help these kill Marines pretty dead. I, uh, I was... Wait, where did that probe go? Okay, he's still there. Or she, if it's a girl probe. Uh, he might be making a pylon over there already. Uh, yeah, I would imagine he's going to do something like that. Oh. Or she, if it's a girl. Yeah, or she, if it's a girl pylon. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what this uh, probe identifies as. but yeah, uh, that's right. Um, we have uh, mass gates coming down here now. I think this build by a Blaze is fairly you know, self-explanatory. <laughs> He is going to power up mm -hmm. and try to really abuse the Terran here at the entrance. And it might work because you can see Terran is more than sure that it's warp prison play. And the Adepts might just walk mm. up the ramp and kill the bunker. I don't... Well, let's see how this does yeah. post-patch. Uh, yeah, this is this is kind of neat because the way that you actually do this is you have like an Adept making sure nothing's coming down that ramp. And then you shade everything onto the bunker at the last second. So you'll see the shades sit below the ramp. Uh, for a little bit to let the timer go down because you don't want them to have time to walk over. Last second, you bring the shades up and then let them all appear at once. Like There's just no time for Tasia to react in that situation. Then the wall will be broken. Yeah, you got that one out. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> the show can go on now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, well, we are seconds away from this attack commencing. Although Tasia does seem to have some good game sense, is now regrouped. Yeah. Probably noticing that by now a warp prism should have come in. So yeah. he might be completely ready for this. Now, that's still okay. Like, he can still power this down. Uh, he, what he needs to do is do this before SCVs can get up there, before Marines can. So watch this. He's will say. Okay. Wait for it. Oh, you're, he did that too quickly, oh, I would say. Oh, that was too fast. Uh, gave him a little bit of extra time there, but he'll still get it down before SCVs can make yeah. it. Well, especially with the Marines blocking away. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but he's going to keep pressing forward. I don't know if it's going to do anything. I like the eBay placement there. That's pretty cute. Yeah, this is really smart of Tasia to just throw down another building immediately because Adepts with only four range don't... Like, the surface area here is just vastly superior for Tasia on top of this, this ramp. This is going horribly. Yeah, this is not... This is actually, like, hurting my eyes to see. This is not the prettiest thing I've, I've seen. The word fugly comes to mind. <laughs> um. <laughs> is that a real word? I have slang. I don't know if it's in Webster's dictionary, but... Yeah. Webster gets to decide these things, of yeah. course. Who is this man, Webster, who controls our words? Yeah. Um, well, I don't let him control my words. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, uh, okay. He's going to get the depot. Let's see if he can keep this going. I guess if he actually gets up there. Is he uh, just going to go right on top of yeah, this? Yeah, I think he is. Like He's pretty all in. Uh, and so well, Tasia runs back there. to a bunker. That was really, really smart of him to do. Well, you know what? I mean, he's done a decent amount of damage. There's more adepts coming up here. Hmm. Well, he's shading quite a few back towards that uh, towards that back natural. The back natural is going to be in some trouble, I would say. Yes, you are right about that, Artos. There's a lot of SCDs being picked off here, and I think this actually might just work. Even though it wasn't the prettiest strategy, um, he is getting up there, man. Yeah, he's, he's doing some serious damage at this point. 13 SCVs dead. Things you've got to not forget is that Tasia's getting upgrades during all of this. That's true. And that's absolutely not the case for Blaze. Blaze is literally only making adepts. Like this one Liberator that's being made is going to be pretty good over in, <laughs> in Blaze's debt uh, base if he doesn't have perfectly placed pylons. Okay, he's coming down now. He's continuing to do some damage to these SCVs. It's 38 probes to 30 SCVs right now, by the way. I uh, love the fact that he's uh, forced out some Widow Mines here. Widow Mines actually one of the, the better units against Adepts. And he's just committing with these Adepts, by the way. Yeah, he's really serious There's about them. There's some one-dimensionality to this, but uh, it's yeah. definitely working. Uh, and in fact, is this the critical uh, number where he's actually just going to snowball this? Uh, it might be. Yeah, I don't see There's any other There's just not really anything left. Oh, man, Tasia. Loser to the Fugly build. OK. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. Of a heartbreaker, I think, for all Tasia's fans watching this right now. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, Blaze is a solid.